great to be here with you, Peter. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's great to be back in Finland. Yeah, you were here on 17, right? First time on stage? Yes. Yeah, cool. And I actually wanted to start out today with something that stuck with me from our prep call last week. Because I asked you, how are you, Peter? And you said, I'm living the dream. <laughs> Uh, so maybe you could start there with your dream, actually. What, what is this dream that you're having? And uh, tell us a little bit about your ambition to build the world's greenest battery. So um, when, uh, when we started this, uh, this I, whoops, <laughs> uh, I shouldn't call it uh, a project anymore because it's a, it's a much bigger thing than, yeah. than, than a project. But we, um, we basically saw that, that uh, Europe, um, if... If Europe should uh, uh, achieve its Paris Treaty and, and uh, really uh, fulfill uh, uh, the requirements, basically re uh, reducing the carbon footprint with, with 80% mm. over uh, three decades, mm. uh, there is just a, a, a massive need to, uh, to take oil out of, of uh, transportation, uh, to change their uh, energy generation. Mm. And, and uh, all of this require energy storage. And, yeah. and kind of, uh, you know, having been at Tesla before uh, being part of, of uh, developing the Gigafactory, I knew what would be required in order to, to scale. Mm. And, and this was, was uh, kind of the, the thesis that we looked at. You know, can we build large scale uh, um, capacity in Europe uh, in order to, to support this, this transformation. Mm. And the more we, we looked at it, um, the, the more we saw that, that specifically there is two things. One is, is that uh, building batteries and energy storage is, is incredibly energy uh, intensive. Mm. To take from raw material to a finished battery, you basically consume almost a hundred times the amount of energy mm. that you produce. So a hundred kilowatt hour to produce one, um, one kilowatt hour. And that means that it becomes super, super important, not just that we build batteries for vehicles and for energy storage, but it becomes also super important that we do it in the right way, that we build it uh, in grids where we have sustainable uh, energy. As a, mm. as a comparison, if you, uh, if you take the entire car industry, which is basically 90 million vehicles a mm. year, Yep. And you say, okay, all this industry is going to transform into electric vehicles. And you do this based on batteries built in cold-based grids, such as China and, you know, a number of East European uh, countries. You will create the carbon footprint building these batteries, solving the oil problem that is the size of half German's carbon footprint mm. or the size of Spain's carbon footprint. Yeah. And this become, became a big, big mission. It's like not just building energy storage, but, but to drive this transition in a green way. Yeah. So that became the, 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 the big, big mission in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in the Northvolt uh, start. Mm. Mm. And I guess that was also the reason for your choice to position this first uh, gigafactory uh, in the northern part of Sweden, where you actually have access to, to that kind of energy. Um, I, I, absolutely. I mean, the, uh, we choose uh, Skellefteå, where we're building uh, our first factory, and we're um, just um, uh, basically a, a month away from, from starting pr production. Uh, where we have a huge surplus of, of hydropower. Mm, mm. And, and uh, it means we can get it green and we can get it uh, continuously because that's also a challenge for industry is uh, if you're dependent on solar and, and just wind, mm. uh, you will have intermittent supply, which yep. means, uh, which doesn't work for industry. Yeah, exactly. And another aspect of building a gigafactory like that, that is, of course, the people that you need. And how many people are you on board now on your team? We are roughly 2,200 or yeah, so. Yeah. Um, we're growing with um, uh, about 100, 120 people per month. Wow, yeah. Um, that's recruiting and, uh, for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, that's recruiting for you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we have, uh, you know, part of, of building a company is also, uh, you know, building an internal recruitment generator. Yeah. So we have a team of 25 people who is just wow. working on recruitment. Um, looking back at these five years and more than 2,000 people, what would you say have been the key challenges in terms of building a team this size? I mean, there, there is a number of different challenges in different steps. 
um, in, in the beginning, um, you know, one thing I brought with me from, from, from uh, also from Tesla when, and uh, working with, with, with Elon was, you know, if you want to build a world-class company, you can't just look at a, a local labor market. Yeah. You, you really, really need to go after the best wherever in the world you will find them. Mm. If you find the best uh, cell designers in Japan or, or Korea, uh, go for it. Mm. And if you find the best uh, battery systems and data an analysts in, in Silicon Valley, that's where, mm. you, uh, where you need to go. And, and when you're doing that as a startup, it's you know it has a number of different uh, challenges because you're you don't have an organization to uh, to take care of this or mm. you know you work permits you yeah. need to help them with finding apartments and Stockholm is not an easy uh, mm. uh, city so so you 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 basically needed to overdimension this, this part in order to build a very attractive team. Uh, from uh, from the start, mm. then you have the the next challenge, which is, you know, up to 50 people, you can pretty much work as a, as a group. You can um, solve all things uh, pretty much directly, and everybody becomes an individual contributor. Yeah. But then, when you get beyond uh, 50 and you get to 100, you, you know, you need to start leading uh, through leaders. Mm. And then, when you get uh, beyond 500, you need to have leaders that can lead through other leaders. Mm. And and um, during this this growth, um, there are certain people that grows with the task, but there's also certain people that just don't fit mm. with uh, um, being uh, you know a strong individual contributor and then become and this you know in the beginning you're so tight you work so hard yeah. together so it becomes almost like emotional divorces when imagine. you have to um, when, when you have to take these decisions during a, a growth yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, pace and we'll, we'll come back to the leadership part of this in a, in a little while but I also wanted to ask as an impact investor myself a very proud backer of Northvolt uh, Thank you. even though we're probably a rounding error on your cap table yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, has the impact uh, made it uh, more easy to recruit people to your team would you say? Uh, absolutely I mean uh, um, I think uh, uh, you know standing for a you know a mission and and wanting to do a big impact where where you can go home and and you, and say you know I'm I'm not solving a small problem mm. I'm solving a big problem mm. is is very very attractive uh, we see that when uh, when we're looking for people from all over the world that that being part of this mission and and kind of feeling very strongly is perhaps the most important uh, part of, of attracting this this talents mm. over you know then other things also becomes important like you know providing uh, you know shareholding for for all our employees yeah. etc but but the mission is so powerful but mm. it also becomes super important that you in all aspects living the mission because mm. your your employees becomes your biggest critics yeah yeah that's that's great yeah. to have on board yeah. And, and so this has really made you made it able for you to attract people to join from all over the world to to northern Sweden, basically. Um, and, and you mentioned the diversity. You you have how many nationalities again? Like ninety? We, or we've so? surpassed a uh, hundred a uh, hundred nationalities. Uh, hundred nationalities yeah. uh, I think a couple of months ago. Yeah. And and uh, I mean we were very very proud of this. Mm. Uh, I mean one. One interesting source of of, of knowledge. Mm. Uh, it, it's kind of interesting. Um, in Sweden, for example, um, taking a PhD um, is is not um, compared, for example, to the US or in uh, in Germany. Mm. Um, it doesn't pay off that well. Exactly. Uh, and and um, so many people, uh, also Swedish people. Um, don't go for for the uh, for a PhD unless you really really want to become mm. a, a, a professor. Mm. Um, and um, so we've and, and thereby there is there's a lot of of uh, 
uh, foreign students that mm. join the Swedish PhD programs at KGH and, and Chalmers, etc. Mm. And they were really struggling. I mean, super competent people were really struggling to get, you know, good jobs in in uh, uh, in, in Swedish large corporations. Mm. And we took a bunch of them. I mean, and they're super capable, super motivated, mm. and uh, you know, it was a, that was an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and in addition to that, I guess you're then a very diverse company. Um, do you see any advantage of that? Uh, kind of has that been important in recruiting on other aspects as well? I think um, um, I think there is a lot of uh, uh, lot of benefits in, in the sense, uh, but but you know, diversity is also an investment long term um, mm. uh, it, because it means difference of thought. It means. Um, uh, a bit of a longer process uh, in order to align everybody. Mm. Um, uh, so, but it also means that there is a little, you know, so smaller risk that you will run off a cliff yeah. where yeah. everybody is just running the same uh, direction. So, so that diversity is, is important. But what we do see is, is there is challenges. Uh, you know, when you're a startup, for example, you bring people from, from Asia, mm. Uh, that are used to very hierarchical structures. Yeah. And then you give them a flat organization and, and you give them a lot of responsibility. And uh, that needs retraining, reprogramming. Mm. Um, and and it, takes, it, it takes a while. Mm. It's also, you know, when you're getting... Because different cultures also have different approaches to problem solving. Yeah. So when you have a multifaceted group that is, you know, going after a complex problem, you might have very different ways of approaching it. And, mm. and uh, so it becomes super, super important that you, you're, you're really working on bridging this and, and that uh, you're starting to create your own very strong culture. Mm. This is... This is what leadership is at us. Yeah. This is the way we approach, le- uh, you know, problem solving. This is, this is the type of behaviors that we encourage. Mm, mm. And, and speaking of culture, there, because you mentioned previously that you also have a background from Tesla, was there a certain part of the Tesla culture that you brought with you into the Northworld culture? And are there other aspects that you've added? Would you mind describing the culture today? Well, I, I think, um, um, you know. Tesla made me realize how important, you know, to be, be driven by a mission yeah. um, and, and how important it is to walk the talk. I mean, you, you know, you could argue a lot about uh, Elon's uh, different ways, but, but you could never argue about uh, uh, his dedication to, to the mission. Mm. And, that, and, and that brought a lot of energy into, uh, uh, into, uh, into the company. We really, really tried... Um, to uh, uh, embrace that with uh, with building uh, the, uh, the the Norfolk uh, structure. Mm. The other one is is you know uh, before joining Tesla, I, you know I've been with a couple of large corporations. Yep. I worked with semiconductors. I worked with uh, with uh, 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 mobile phones, and in these companies, you. You know, when you can become a manager, director, vice president, you always work with these these balance scorecards. You mm. have like, uh, you know, eight different, and every month you look at it, and it's like red, yellow, green, and and then when I came to Tesla, it was like, okay, this, you know, this quarter we have two objectives. Mm. This is our balance scorecard, and and that's, uh, you know, to take problems step by step and not trying to do everything in, mm. and balance the scorecard, but yep. really focus mm. is, is something that is, it's a little bit challenging, but it really makes a momentum mm. uh, in, uh, uh, in an organization. So we've really focused on reducing the objectives uh, and, and the way that we work with kind of OKRs yep. uh, in, uh, in, in our organization. Super. So really strong focus. That's an advice for, I guess, all the founders out there. And maybe if you were to to share another advice on how to build a team like this, what would you share with uh, the people out there that are currently building their teams? I think uh, one thing uh, um, that um, is is um, that I would uh, would very much uh, share is is obviously you know. 
as as a founder, you you need to complement yourself. Yeah. You, you know, you need uh, you need to build a team that is complementary. But that also means that you need to know what your weak sides are, mm. so that you can complement uh, 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 complement uh, uh, these. Uh, the other one that that I think is super important uh, and that we focus a lot on on now is uh, is is kind of the multiplier theory mm. uh, that you know it's not just important for you as a leader to uh, uh, to to achieve your objectives to to uh, uh, to meet uh, 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 meet a, a performance target, but it's as important that you are a talent attractor, yeah. um, that people want to work with you mm. and, and want to come, mm. because if, if you're not, we will not scale. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, this is uh, also when you're working with engineering organizations, these two are not always uh, uh, the same in the same person. Mm. Mm. And, and you, um, you need to be honest about that. Mm. Mm. And, and that's um, that's a hard truth sometimes. Yeah, and I guess you, that's something you learn along along the way. Like it is, it is. Mm, mm. It is. Mm. And that leads us into kind of your leadership style a little bit. And I guess that has also changed a lot during these years. And as you scale the company, um, I, f- for sure. I mean, um, it is. Um, uh, you know, it it, it is different <laughs> when when you uh, when you uh, in the beginning. You know, you have your first 20 employees mm. at the office, face to face every day. Yeah. You know, obviously, you you have much more faster changes. Yeah. In the beginning, you have much more kind of you know, <laughs> tomorrow we run out of funds. You know, <laughs> what the fuck do we do? Yeah. Uh, and and as you grow um, as you grow bigger, um, you you need to recognize that that doing um, big changes um, needs a, a much more uh, much more communication mm. uh, it needs bringing much more people on board mm. understanding um, you 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 know you're you're becoming the driver of a super tanker but you still want mm. it to be a fast track super tanker mm. yeah and and that um, um, that requires uh, uh, some some changes in in the way that uh, uh, that you lead, and mm. uh, and also that you need to think a little bit more about um, how you communicate. Mm. Uh, I, I can take in a, I take a, take in an example. I mean, I was up in in Kjellefteå and every um, every Wednesday. Uh, so also today, I do a, 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 a video streaming for all employees, mm-hmm. and. Um, we were having this uh, this situation up in in Skellefteå where we kind of got the um, at our big building site we got the a second wave of uh, of corona mm. and it was mainly driven by that a lot of of our subcontractors uh, were not vaccinated oh no mm. and and uh, and you know the first wave of corona was very disruptive for us it's, it was very difficult to 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 run uh, so I went out in my my uh, uh, my, my my stream and said, uh, you know, we we will give all our sub uh, subcontractors a certain time. Let's I think it was like ten days mm. to get vaccinated. Mm. But but after that we will not uh, allow people that are not vaccinated uh, uh, on on site. It's a matter of of safety for yeah. for for everybody. And it took like. And this was an internal video streaming. Mm. It took like 15 minutes mm. before we had Aftonbladet wow. and Norran and mm. other newspapers mm. uh, saying, you know, we heard you communicated this message. Mm. You, you know, are you now taking decisions over people's lives? Yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, these these are realities that mm. comes with with a bigger company. Mm. Yeah, and and. and also a lot of uh, media focus. I can imagine, I can imagine. And I mean, this is obviously a, a big role, a big job that you're taking on. How, how do you find or take rather the time to kind of recharge? I mean, a, a day like this, mm. actually not booking too many meetings, but, mm. but just being a, a day 
off um, reflecting a bit mm. is, is I think it's, it, it, there is no way that you can run a marathon like this mm. if you don't uh, have uh, a little bit of a switch off uh, yeah. uh, uh, button and uh, and I tried to, to do that, uh, but it is hard. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, um, it is also so that that whenever there is a crisis, the organization will always look at you mm. how you act in in a uh, in, in in a crisis, mm. and if you don't act with a sense of urgency. You can't expect the rest of the uh, the organization. Mm, mm. So I can take a, another example. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. During the autumn, uh, 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 the, the school break in, in the autumn in in, in Sweden, I, I, me and my my kids together with my partner, we we traveled to Uganda, um, wow. and uh, because she is running a, a charity there, and we will were uh, uh, buying some land to build a, a school cool. and, and we were really off the grid in, in Uganda mm. so I, I, I didn't have access to internet and thereby you know I didn't have access to teams chats etc mm. so I didn't I couldn't see that there was a team chat around that we had uh, we actually had a fire uh, in, in our uh, plant in, uh, in Westeros where we have R&D mm. and and uh, uh, it wasn't a big fire, but but whenever we uh, you know call nine one one, you know it's always police, fire department, and not at least media mm. uh, comes. Mm. And and uh, um, this was a fairly we, you know it's, it's a small thing. We our employees took care of it, but mm. part of the procedure is that they need to go to a health check uh, afterwards because uh, uh, you know. Uh, the, the fumes uh, in a battery, specifically the electrolyte, is a little bit. Mm. Uh, it could be dangerous. Mm. So they went on a, on a health check. It took uh, 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 took an hour, and then they were back uh, at at, uh, at at work. But in media, this became, you know, three injured in in a fire in Westeros, and mm. I st I was down in Uganda, and I started to get SMS oh, wow. from from board members and. And, mm. and investors asking me, what about the injured people in, in, in Westeros? Oh. And I was totally... Uh, and then you get uh, yeah. a, a build-up of, of anxiety. It was, um, a, it, it was a cool thing, but, but you know, you can never be totally off-grid. Exactly. Okay, so it will be some time until you go off-grid next time. Exactly. <laughs> Cool. I wanted to also, uh, if we fast forward a little bit and talk about kind of future applications of the Northvolt batteries, what are some of the applications that you are most excited about? I think uh, um, what, what is interesting uh, right now is, is, uh, uh, is that you're seeing everywhere where we have a combustion engine, uh, people are thinking of you know, how can we replace this with, uh, with a battery? It's not just a, a car, uh, uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's the diesel generators that we have everywhere mm. on, on concerts, on construction sites, uh, etc. So it's, it's super exciting to see how we reevaluate all these, these, these infrastructure. Mm. Then, you know, if you want to be a little bit more futuristic, but it's not that far away, then, mm. You know the way of, of using batteries for for flying mm. is uh, is not that uh, um, it's not that far away. Mm. Uh, we have today roughly um, an energy density in in our high performing ba batteries that is uh, around 700 watt hours per liter. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, when uh, uh, and and with with that, if you build a, a plane, you can get roughly. Maybe four to five hundred kilometers oh, cool. uh, on on a flight, uh, but the problem is is also with um, with which is kind of the minimum for for uh, regional uh, regional flights. But but you also have a uh, you also have a requirement that you know you should have thirty percent extra uh, yeah. when you land in order so that you can hoover around an, an, an airport or uh, if if there is a is, is an issue uh, which means that that four to five hundred actually becomes mm. you know two hundred and fifty three hundred mm. and and that's not not sufficient so mm. you you basically need to go 
towards 1,200 watt hours per liter. Um, we um, acquired a company in, uh, in uh, Silicon Valley in Berkeley, uh, Kuberg, um, earlier this year that is a developing a, a next-gen uh, battery. It's a, it's a lithium metal instead of a traditional graphite uh, uh, anode. It's a lithium metal uh, with, with a special type of, of electrolyte that actually brings uh, cells up to, to 1,000 watt-hours and actually towards 12 and potentially 1,400 watt-hours. And, and I was out, out there when the U.S. opened up uh, two weeks ago I was out there with them and seeing their new facility, their building. They're a little bit, they're like three years where we, from, from where we were when we started to build our R&D. Mm. Uh, and I was meeting up these, these uh, uh, electric uh, uh, aviation companies and recognizing that, you know, this is going to change, you know, you're going to go much more from big, uh, you know, flight point to point. Uh, mm. uh, if I take one example, um, Delta, for example, um, it's a, a Vermont uh, that, that is focusing on, on cargo, flight cargo. Yep. Uh, they can lift 750 kg uh, on, on one plane. And, and DHL have done a big investment in them because they see that instead of having big airplanes that DHLs have today that goes through Memphis and these hubs, uh, uh, they will build in the future a mesh network. Mm. So small peer-to-peer -peer jump that mm. will suit E-Trade much better, mm. faster deliveries. Mm. Uh, it will start with a pilot, but uh, you know, eventually it will uh, be without pilots. Mm. And, and this is, you know, they will start certifying planes 2023. They might be up and running by 2025. And, and it's fairly big volumes. Yeah. Uh, so it's... Uh, it's, it's um, you know, five years um, uh, away, and, and that's nothing. So in five years, we can travel here by electric aircrafts? I, I think uh, Stockholm to Helsinki, uh, borderline five years, okay. but for sure in 10 years. Amazing. Yeah. Great. Final question for you, Peter. Uh, do you think uh, Northolt is that your last venture, or is there more to come? Will you go into space like some other people? I mean, you. <laughs> no, no. Uh, you, you, you never know what what your last uh, uh, venture. But I, I, it feels like right now I will mm. kind of die with uh, with Northvolt. Uh, but 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 I do have one dream uh, that I've uh, been pretty outspoken with, and that is is eventually I would like to be also become a wine farmer. Wow. Mm. So that's that might be my my last uh, venture. Uh, uh, at least as I see it today. Sounds really nice. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank Great you. To speak to you. Thank you. <laughs>